So this is Gage, and Gage is my almost four-year-old son. And what you are seeing is a video of Gage, which is something that was more common than not um, from the time he was about 10 months old until the time he was about three and a half. And again, this is not um, out of the norm, but it's decreased quite a bit. And so what's going on with Gage that you might ask? Well, here's another picture of Gage. It's a soccer field. Another picture of Gage hanging out at home. And another picture of Gage um, getting his newborn baby brother at the time's pictures taken. And so what's going on with Gage is this. Um, at the age of three, actually, uh, Gage started speech therapy when he was two years old. Um, we started to notice that he had a speech delay, um, both expressive and receptive, when he was about 16 months old. He wasn't developing language the way other kids develop language. And so he started going to speech therapy when he was two. And they ran the gamut of tests and, you know, did all, all the good stuff that they do to kind of determine what's going on with kids when they're not developing appropriately. And one of the things that they found is that um, he has a expressive language delay, a receptive language delay. He also has sensory seeking disorder. And he um, has a severe, as he's getting older now, they've recognized that he has a severe articulation disorder. And so when he was um, tested, they found that his... Um, expressive language skills were in the fifth percentile and his receptive language skills were in the 15th percentile. And he has not actually been diagnosed with apraxia yet, but that's kind of what he's trending towards from um, the perspective of his speech and language pathologist or his S SLP. So what I wanted to talk to you today is how we've gone with my family from this crying kid who threw fits all the time because um, he was physically unable to articulate what it is he wanted or needed at the time. And as a result of getting frustrated um, and not being able to say what he wanted and to, you know, do, you know, get people to understand what it is that he needs, he would throw these fits and have these um, tremendous meltdowns everywhere we went. And so I wanted to talk today about all the great technology that we've used going um, in the past and then going forward with Gage to kind of get him up to speed where he's at right now. And so uh, the first app that we ever used, Gage was about 11 months old, and it was the American Sign Language Baby and Sign and Learn app. And neither my husband nor I knew sign language. And so really with this app, it was more for us to, to learn how to sign with him. And so he would learn things like more. He would learn things like please, um, thank you. He would say his sign for drink and his sign to eat. And so it was really helpful with us because that allowed him just to have some basic signs to communicate just really basic, simple needs. And had it not been for this app, I really don't think that my husband and I would have ever known the advantage of teaching a young child sign language. Um, Toka Boca, this is an app that we use. It's pretty cool. Um, it's, like, it's fun and engaging. He's used it with his speech pathologist. He also uses it at home, kind of just like a fun interactive game. What's cool about Toka Boca is they uh, have role-playing activities. And I like the role-playing activities because he really gets to kind of um, see how he should be behaving and reacting and communicating in a bunch of different um, settings and it encourages him to make generalizations and it's just a really great app. My Play Home is kind of cool. It's an interactive um, dollhouse and there's a family as you can see in the photo and the family does different things that you make them do in the house. Turn on, on and off the lights, getting in and out of bed, putting the baby in the crib, sitting at the kitchen table. But what I like about it is that if I'm working with Gage at this time, I will say things to him like, you know, I'll point to the bed and I say, what is that? And, you know, in his limited language, he might say bed or whatever his word is for bed. Um, or it's really good for his um, receptive language because I can say things like, make the baby uh, sit at, at the high chair and the baby will sit in the high chair. You know, he'll pick up the baby and put the baby in the high chair or have the mommy flip on and off the lights. And then while we're doing this, we're like really overemphasizing the on and the off, have them on, lights on, lights off. So it's just really, it's a really good interactive, fun thing. Um, Articulation Station is cool. It was created by an actual speech and language pathologist. Um, in using this app, the goal is to practice how to articulate words and sentences. There are different story levels, um, and it's fun and interactive. This is Sonoflex. We don't use it as much anymore, but we were really using this when Gage was about, you know, in between two and a half and three, when he really couldn't verbalize anything and um, 
if there was just sign language just got a little bit overwhelming as far as me having to learn it and teach it um, he on this app could touch a symbol you know and the symbol would say the word so like if he were to touch the art symbol right there it, he would hear the word art and then he could say you know try to say the word art and so at least this way he was being able to communicate um, with us so it really is just kind of turning the symbol into clear speech and providing language and nonverbal uh, for nonverbal users. And then this one um, is a new one that we're trying out because Gage is in preschool right now. He's actually been going to a developmentally delayed preschool in Guthrie, and he's on an IEP. And um, so he's learning his letters and the sounds. And um, one of the things with apraxia, kids that have it, it might be difficult for them to learn how to read. And so we want to get a leg up. And this is a cool app. It's called I Touch I Learned Speech and Language Skills. And it's a fun way to learn how to pronounce and spell words. It's really geared towards kids who are just learning how to read. And so um, really, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. And again, if it weren't for all these amazing technology apps um, that I've used and my, my son has used, I really don't think that he's, his speech would be where it's at today. And um, it's a it's a uh, journey that we're on with him, and I'm excited to see the more and more apps that get developed for kids that have speech delays and speech disorders. Um, thanks again.